I just need to make a quick note here about networks in AWS. AWS has a service called VPC, which is Virtual Private Cloud. Inside of here are private networks. There's more to it than that, but essentially private networks. Every region by default, and we're in US East 2 in this case in Ohio, has a default VPC set up for you. A VPC, like I said, is a private network. Each VPC has some IP address range. In this case, this is the IP address range of this subnet. So 172.3100 all the way to the slash 16 range. If I plug this IP address range into a utility here, we'll see that the first IP address is so 172.3100, and the last one is 31.255.255. So that's the range of IP addresses we have. It's quite a lot, right? 65,000 IP addresses available technically. So that is the VPC. It has all these IP addresses available inside of it to assign to servers and stuff like that. But a VPC is carved up further into subnets. Now, within your default VPC within each region, you'll have one subnet per availability zone. So we have one per availability zone here for the Ohio for US East 2. So US East 2A, US East 2B, and 2C. Those are the three availability zones of Ohio. Other regions have more or less availability zones within them. So sometimes you'll have four subnets, sometimes you'll have three. It varies per region. Again, that's only in your default VPC. If you create your own custom VPC, you can make as many as you want. Okay, so we in this course are going to use our default VPC. We're going to have our servers all be part of this virtual private cloud, this network that we get by default. That means our resources, such as our server and our database and our cache, are each going to be in a subnet. Because subnets are specific to an availability zone, that also means we will technically be selecting which availability zone those resources are inside of by setting what subnet a server or a database or a cache or anything that connects to the network resides inside of. So a few things are happening here. There's a VPC that provides a range, an IP address range. We have a subnet, which is carving out smaller sections of the greater range, right? So we have 3100 through 20, 3116 to 20, and 3132 slash 20. And then there's other ones that just aren't allocated that can't be used yet until I create new subnets. So each of these subnets have about 4,000 addresses that they can assign to things, right? So the private IP address will get assigned to a server or a database or whatever as they get added into this network. So we have the VPC. It's got an IP address range. We have subnets. Each subnet carves out a little bit of that VPC, a different range. These are non-overlapping ranges. Each subnet is specific to an availability zone. So when we select what subnet a server or database or whatever goes into, we're also implicitly setting what availability zone they will go into. That matters because each of these are separate physical buildings within the US East 2 region or whatever region you're in. Each availability zone is a separate physical building. They're close together geographically, but they're separate buildings, which means putting things in multiple availability zones gives you higher availability. Okay, last thing to care about here is we have this notion of route tables. I'm not going to go into it too much. Just know that your default VPC is set up in such a way that the route tables allow anything inside of this default VPC to be connected to from the outside internet and the outside internet to be talked to from within whatever resources in here, like a server. So we have a route table. There's only one route table here, and each subnet has this route table assigned to it. And it basically is going to have this route that says um, anything on the private network. So if we make a request into the private network IP address, it's going to stay in the local network. However, if we make a request to the outside internet, it's going to use this internet gateway to uh, allow that request outside to the outside internet. So we can do things like apt get install on our servers and all that kind of good stuff, and you can reach out to the internet. At the same time, this also means that a server can have an IP address assigned to a public one, and then the outside internet can actually make requests into the server. So that's the default setup for the default VPC that you get within each region when you create your AWS account. We're going to be using the default VPC in this video course, which means the servers that I add here are going to be accessible from the outside internet. They're going to get assigned a public IP address. I'll show you a little bit more of that as we create resources in the upcoming videos.